to the K to the K to the K Hello one and all, welcome to the A to the K Wrestling Show where I'm going to attempt my very best Simon Miller only there's no time for ups or downs because this is the Rapid Roundup and kicking things off on Monday Night Raw we had the one and only Cody Rhodes in his home of Jacksonville during the pandemic era ha <laughs> ha AEW references, oh Cody, never change um, he basically says Brock Lesnar is in the rear view mirror his focus is now firmly on the World Heavyweight Championship, which makes still no sense because it's still not the title that his dad never won, that he wants to avenge and all that good stuff. He may as well just be going after the 24-7 title at this point. But hey, keep doing you, Cody. Um, he goes on to reveal the uh, tournament bracket before Seth freaking Rollins comes out, stares him down and laughs in his face. <laughs> as we go into the very first match of the night where we see Seth Rollins taking on Damian Priest and Shinsuke Nakamura in the first of two triple threat matches uh, where the winners will go on to the main event to face each other for a shot at that World Heavyweight Championship at Night of Champions. Um, and just as uh, Damian Priest is about to submit to Shinsuke Nakamura, we see a flying Seth freaking Rollins hitting uh, Shinsuke with a frog splash, followed by a pedigree and the win. Rollins advances to the main event. Following this, the battle for who loves Otis the motest, mostest, damn it, uh, continues between Maxine Dupree and Chad Gable. Um, they argue about whether or not Otis uh, should do the Caterpillar, amongst other things, ultimately causing the distraction and ultimately gives a win to Mr. Free Agent himself, Mustafa Ali. Next, we have the second of the triple threats as out come The Miz, Finn Balor and Cody for his second entrance because we simply can't have too much adrenaline in our souls, apparently. Um, the match itself was pretty good, uh, but Cody still has not learnt his lesson because he attempts not one, not two, but three crossroads on The Miz and he should know by now when he attempts that many, things don't end well. You know, why not do one, pin The Miz, get the win... No, no, he'll attempt three, and just as he's about to get the pin, Brock Lesnar pulls him out the ring and hits him with an F5. This creates enough time for Finn um, Balor to get the win. Finn gets the win, folks. Um, and following on from this, Brock Lesnar beats the living crap out of Cody Rhodes. Um, he gives him another F5 through the announce table, uh, and then quite humorously asking Cody Rhodes what he wants to talk about. Um, Brock says what he wants to talk about is a fight. Um, he also grabs a camera and pulls it really close and tells him, tells us at home to look at his beautiful face, which I'm not being funny. If Brock Lesnar grabbed me and told me to look at his beautiful face, I would be staring into them lovely blue eyes. Um, so yeah, beats the crap out of him, says he wants a fight at Night of Champions. Street fights, last man standing, what does it all mean? Hopefully we'll find out soon enough. Following this, we have the... Uh, Start of Rhea Ripley's run on Raw um, against Dana Brooke, of all people, because obviously it is. Um, and poor Dana, she doesn't even get a high five from one of the young fans at ringside on her way to the ring. It's not coming up Dana, and you can tell that because she also suffered another loss here, quite expectedly. Um, but yeah, Rhea Ripley gets the win and continues to beat down Dana after the match when who should come out for the save? Natalia. Consider me whelmed. Following this, we have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn taking on Imperium, who take yet another loss. Proving that without Gunther, they really aren't all that. They should not be called Imperium. They should be called Imperidum. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, who writes this crap? Um, on commentary, they state Gunther might not be happy by this. What are they doing here? They're teasing a potential split of Imperium? Who knows? We will find out next week. Uh, we also see a lot of other things. Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville are backstage petitioning for a tag team title rematch. They encounter The Way, who are back together again, who mentioned that he will be back soon. Does this mean we are going to get Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano for the 8,000th time? Probably. Um, but we also got some other stuff. We got Zoe Stark making a Raw debut. She defeated Nikki Cross. Dominic Mysterio gets in a confrontation backstage with Xavier Woods. Uh, and so Condom... Himself, with the help of Mami, picks up the win there over Xavier Woods. Following this, we had Trish Stratus cutting a promo on Becky Lynch, uh, talking about her still being missing, going off on Becky, going off on Iowa, going off on Becky's daughter, which is the line you just don't cross, damn it. Um, but essentially, we think 
the Becky's come back because her music plays, only for Trish to get the lols because she'd set it all up. And yeah, turns out she's not coming back, except the music it hits again. And Becky Lynch does actually come back. She stood behind Trish and punches her right in the mouth, um, hits her with a Bexploder. And just as she's about to cut a promo, she gets cut off by her music again. Um, so yeah, I think big time Bex was big time pissed if you ask me um following this we had some more stuff via mahan is coming to raw again only this time he's bringing sanga and jinder mahal with him we have Liv morgan and raquel rodriguez accepting chelsea and sonya's challenge um but it's not going to be for this week because they're facing someone else so next week on raw by the sounds of it um the miz briefly tries to form a tag team with shinsuke nakamura called miss k nakamura he's better at writing these puns than i am um and basically nak challenges him to a match next week instead meanwhile cody Rhodes says the tournament was his to win uh says he's the man around here and accepts brock lesnar's challenge for a fight at night of champions this leads us to the main event of Raw, where we see Seth freaking Rollins taking on Finn Balor. And you know what? Great match. It was a nice little throwback to the Universal title uh, match as well, with the attempted buckle bomb onto, well, the barricade bomb, if you will, um, which obviously took Finn out. So Finn does the same to Seth, only that doesn't do the job, unfortunately, for him. And Seth picks up the win and is headed to Night of Champions for the tournament final. Coming up on SmackDown this week, we're going to see the return of Roman Reigns, and they're asking, what will it mean for the bloodline? Uh, we're also going to get to see Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez defend against damage control, and of course, we will see the SmackDown side of the bracket for the Raw Championship. Doesn't make much sense, but hey, that's what they're doing. Um, matches that are planned there, we are going to see AJ Styles taking on Edge and Rey Mysterio in a match that's sure to be a banger. And speaking of bangers, we're going to see Sheamus taking on Lashley and Theory in the other triple threat going on there. So, let's mosey on over to AEW, shall we? Uh, to Dynamite, where an eight-man tag match kicked off the show. Um, ultimately, Adam Cole picked up the win here for his team. Um, and goes on to attack Chris Jericho, uh, and Jericho, poor Jericho, gets bitch slapped around the whole arena, not just by Adam Cole, but Britt Baker gets a shot in there as well, and goes on to call him Bitch Jericho, so yeah, bad night to the office for Chris. Uh, following this, we had a match between Soraya and Willow, with Soraya picking up the win, shock horror, um, and after the match, you little Sheeta. Because Hikaru Shida comes down and tricks us all into thinking she's joining the outcasts. She gets the spray paint and just as she's about to spray Willow in the face, uh, we see Britt and um, Jamie Hayter come up behind and the outcasts realise something is aloof. Aloof? That's the wrong word. Something is happening. And yeah, uh, Hikaru Shida sprays Soraya right in the face. So take that, Soraya. Following this, the House of, Bra House of Black reveal the Open House, which is uh, essentially some new rules coming to the trio's matches. Um, basically, there's going to be 20-second countouts, there's going to be no rope breaks on submissions, and DQ is enforced, but the option to make it no DQ is always on the table. I mean... Alrighty then. Um, so, following this, we get the Tres de Mayo Battle Royal. Mmm, mayo. Sounds delicious. We have um, loads of different competitors taking place in this, but the final five, if you will, we have Butcher, Blade, and Kip Sabian, and then we have Daddy Ass and um, Bowens from the Acclaimed. But Sizzamy Timbers, we've got new trios contenders because the Acclaimed get the win. And as mentioned, these are now going to take place under the house rules, but that gets even more complicated because the match announced for Dynamite this week doesn't feature the acclaimed. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Wardlow kills a guy like he does. Um, squash match on the cards for Wardlow. Following this, we get Christian Cage and Luchasaurus coming out. Christian tells Wardlow that it's not Luchasaurus who wants the title shot. It's him. And listen here, AW, if you deprive me of big meaty men slapping meat, well, I will not be best pleased. Um, following this, Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal, they're somehow still here. Why are they still here? We don't know. They are. They do an awful skit where they visit the Briscoe Chicken Farm for some reason, and yeah, awful. Double J, please get double the fuck away. Thank you. 
Um, we then get Ricky Starks taking on Bullet Club Gold's Juice Robinson. The hottest free agent Jay White stands at ringside and watches the Juice get squeezed because Starks gets the win and then runs the two of them off. You know, I'd like to say, you know, it was good while it lasted, but it hasn't even seemed to be begun. No idea what they're doing with uh, Bullet Club Gold here, but seems like a bit of a wasted opportunity to have something new and fresh happening. But let's see. Um, MJF pays a visit to Jungle Boy Jack Perry and tries to bribe him into throwing the match later that night. Darby sees what's going on and suspicions arise. Uh, in the least shocking turn of events ever, however, Jack and Darbs get the win um, and we set up the four pullers, four pullers, four pillars match at Double or Nothing. The four pillars have crumbled. Um, so yeah, who's going to pick up the win in this one? What do we all think? Let us know. Over on Rampage, the only thing to really mention is the firm deletion and, yeah, words. I don't have many. Um, it was all the lunacy you would expect from this kind of match. Um, Gothic Baby makes an appearance, so go Gothic Baby. Uh, Stokely Hathaway gets beaten up by pretty much every member of the Hardy family, all the kids, even Rebby Hardy um, beats the crap out of him as well. And, yeah, Hardys get the win. Um, and Jeff thanks Jesus, and we also thank the Lord that it's all over so in terms of what's coming up uh, on dynamite this week we've got a pay-per-view level event folks we've got orange cassidy taking on daniel garcia for the international championship we have ray phoenix and claudio castagnoli i think that's for that's that for a title maybe uh we're gonna hear from christian cage we're gonna hear from ftr anna J uh, or jas rather is taking on julia hart in a grudge match there we have um, House of Black taking on Bandido and Best Friends for the trio's titles. That's, you know, I don't understand how they got that, but okay. And the main event of the evening is going to see Kenny Omega taking on John Moxley, not to be missed. So, yes, there we have it. Another fun-filled week in the world of professional wrestling. What did you enjoy? Let us know in the comments. That was the Rapid Roundup. This is the 8th of the K Wrestling Show, and we'll see you on the next one.